August 1911, Paris, France. In Paris's most famous museum, the Louvre, Vincenzo Perugia was preparing to emerge from a storage closet he had been hiding in the night before. It was now 7.15 a.m. and he was about to commit the 20th century's biggest art heist. But to understand how the art thief got here, we need to go back six months. Vincenzo Perugia was working in the museum fitting protective glass on paintings in the Louvre. While working at the Louvre, he discovered that Napoleon had stolen from Italian paintings and brought them over to France as spoils of war. As an Italian, this troubled Vincenzo. Growing up in Italy, Vincenzo was the oldest son of his family. His family had a long history of debts and he felt a sense of duty that he had to clear them. So with all this in mind, one thing became clear. Vincenzo had to return one of the paintings back to Italy and restore some of its glory. Vincenzo emerges from the cupboard and heads straight to the Salon Carrere, where the Mona Lisa and several other paintings were stored. You see, at the time, Vincenzo didn't actually plan on stealing the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa wasn't even that famous. It was only well known to art experts. The Mona Lisa just happened to be one of the paintings small enough that he could fit under his white smock. He then unclips the Mona Lisa from the hooks and the protective glass that he had fitted months earlier and puts it under his white smock. He then makes his way to a nearby staircase for his escape, but the door is locked. So he pulls out a key because he's already planned for this, but the key isn't working. He panics and starts trying to dismantle the lock with a screwdriver but nothing is working. He needs to be quick before someone notices. And at the top of the steps, he sees a plumber. The plumber approaches. Vincenzo simply explains that the doorknob had broken and then the plumber lets him out with a key. He then escapes committing the biggest art heist of the 20th century. Museum officials didn't even notice the artwork was gone for a full 24 hours. They only noticed because an artist had traveled to the Louvre to paint the Mona Lisa. When he noticed he was missing, he asked officials to locate it. And it's at that point they realized the Mona Lisa was missing. This caused a great sense of panic throughout Paris and it was immediately put into several French newspapers. 60 detectives seek stolen Mona Lisa. Famous Mona Lisa painting stolen. Police searched all over Paris, and anybody with a suspicious package was searched. They had checked the fingerprints of the 200 staff working at the Louvre at the time, but were unable to find anything, apart from one fingerprint which was left on the protective glass of the Mona Lisa. With no luck, they even started searching famous suspects at the time, such as Picasso. However, with Picasso, they ended up finding two statues which were stolen from the Louvre and sold to Picasso. Police continued to search cars and trains leaving Paris and still ended up short. The Mona Lisa was still nowhere to be found. The Mona Lisa remained hidden for a further two years. Vincenzo kept the Mona Lisa in his apartment in a fake trunk. And he also kept a small postcard of the Mona Lisa on his mantelpiece as a kind of nod to himself for what he had achieved. And the empty space in the Louvre where the Mona Lisa was kept began to get famous. People began to flock to see this empty space. And the longer this empty space existed, the more it became a stain of embarrassment for the Louvre. People began flocking to the Louvre, the Louvre, the Louvre. They began flocking to the museum to see the empty space. And newspapers around the world continued to cover the story. And the more time grew, the more this became a stain of embarrassment for the museum. So after this period, Vincenzo then took the Mona Lisa back to Florence, bringing him one step closer to completing his mission. However, time was passing and Vincenzo was growing impatient. He also had a few other things on his mind, like if you remember the debt I mentioned earlier. Before the heist, there's a few letters he wrote to his father. One of them reads, As I understand, you have no job there. I will make some sacrifices so that I hope next spring I'll be able to pay the rest of the debt that you have left. Then, when we finally have no more debts, everything will be better and that little we have will be ours. At that point, I will start thinking about fixing my life. Together with this letter, I'm sending you 50 liras so that you can go through the holidays. 
So we could see here, on top of his patronage to Italy, he really wanted to help his father. He contacted Mario Fratelli, a gallery owner, and tried to sell him the painting. At first, Mario was a little bit skeptical, but upon reviewing the painting, he realized that Vincenzo really had the real Mona Lisa. So he promised Vincenzo some kind of reward money and decided to keep the painting for self-keeping. Instead, what he ended up doing was reporting Vincenzo to the authorities and returning the painting back to the museum and collecting the reward money from the authorities for himself. And with that, Vincenzo's mission to restore honor to Italy had somewhat failed in a sense. Vincenzo was also mistaken about another fact. The Mona Lisa wasn't stolen. It was actually in France 250 years before Napoleon was even born. Leonardo da Vinci had actually taken this painting to Francis I when he was working within his court. And this happened in the 16th century, 250 years before Napoleon was even born. So authorities had recovered the Mona Lisa and it was hung back in the Louvre. Vincenzo was then put on trial in Italy and he was given a light sentence of seven months because it was seen as an act of patronism. There were some questions around this as he did try to sell the Mona Lisa for money and some argued he could have given it to an Italian museum for free. But on 1914, the Mona Lisa was back in its place and it began its career as the most famous painting in history. And as for Vincenzo, a couple years later, World War I began where his patronage was put to the test once again. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm off to apply for a job at the British Museum.